Hello everyone and welcome to Canadian Critics, where we check out the latest and greatest in Canadian literature. I'm your host, Carolyn Dorothy, and today we're going to be looking at Tanya Tagak's debut novel, Split Tooth. First of all, happy Nunavut Day. Today is July the 9th, um, so we're celebrating 20 years since Nunavut officially became the third territory of Canada. Um, I think I was in grade three. I distinctly remember um, the day we learned about Nunavut becoming its own territory, which makes me think that it's not actually July 9th that it would be. Why was I in school? Maybe it was in September, but anyway, I were, my mind was blown that we had suddenly developed a new territory. Um, so happy Nunavut Day. We love you, Nunavut. Sorry, I have a Nova Scotia flag in the background. Um, I need to get some more flags to represent the rest of the 10 provinces, three territories of Canada. But for now, I just have the Nova Scotia one as it's where I'm at and it's my home province. Um, there actually is a connection between Tanya Tagak and Nova Scotia. She went to the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design and got a degree in visual arts. And that was actually where she developed um, her distinct style of solo throat singing. So she's from Cambridge Bay, Nunavut. Hence, uh, happy Nunavut Day to Tanya as well. Um, and throat singing is usually done between two women, um, but because she didn't have a partner to sing with when she was in college, she developed her own signature style. So she's best known in Canada as a musician, as a, as a songwriter and singer, uh, throat singer. And she's released uh, three albums to date, Animism, which won Juno, a Juno Award and the Polaris Music Prize, um, Retribution, as well as Toothsayer this year. She released her latest album. Um, I really enjoy Tanya's music. She's actually been featured on songs by Buck 65, as well as A Tribe Called Red. Um, one of my favorite songs from Retribution, it's called Aorta. I'll leave a link to the video in the down bar because I actually think it really relates to kind of the aesthetic of Split Tooth as well. Um, watch the video, check it out, and you'll see what I mean. Uh, there's going to be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't read Split Tooth, I mean you've had a year, like me, to read it, so if you haven't read it yet, I probably will spoil some things for you, so pause here if you don't want to be spoiled. Uh, talking about Split Tooth, it's her debut novel. It was written in 2008. Um, so last year, it's been a little bit, but I finally gotten around to reading it and I absolutely loved it. I love the style of it. It's, it's kind of a interdisciplinary mix of prose, poetry, and there is some um, um, art prints that are in here as well, kind of in the style of Inuit printmaking, which I thought was really cool. Um, I've read some reviews that describe Split Tooth as a mix between fiction and memoir, which um, is, I, I guess you could say that, although I'm not sure where, uh, how much of it is direct memoir because um, the ending is obviously um, not what happened in Tanya's life. So I would kind of describe Split Tooth more in the context of a northern style of magical realism. And magical realism is a term that describes um, a style of writing, of literature, that blends the fantastical and the mythological with the very ordinary and the everyday. So um, it's more associated with Latin American authors like Gabriel Garcia Marquez, um, and it's in, this, in a lineage of post-colonial literature, so reacting against the dominant hegemonic colonial structures um, of countries 
in South America as well as North America. So I think Tanya really fits into this category um, using a sort of magical realism and a post-colonial um, lineage within Canada and using it to make her own style that reflects um, her own upbringing, her own um, worldviews that is very tied to Inuit culture and tradition. It uses the tradition, the Inuit tradition, and the um, legend, especially the legend of Sedna, the sea goddess, and um, the animism that comes about with uh, her connection, the narrator's spiritual connection with the fox, and um, her spiritual encounter with the northern lights, this ecstatic singular event that really changes the course of the narrative. Um, and so it's, it's hard to distinguish how much of the narrative is um, the narrator truthfully giving us the story of what happened to her and how much of it is um, her own consciousness exploring these spiritual, fantastical, mythological, um, legendary stories um, in her own life that come about almost instinctually and which kind of spiral out of control for her because she doesn't have um, the foundations um, that the Inuit would have had before her. So her, the older generations, her parents' generations, her teachers, they've all been through the residential school system and actually the book is dedicated to the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and survivors of residential schools, um, which I think is an important element of this book in that it highlights how much of a void that residential schools and Christian, Christian missionaries left behind in the communities and how that impacted their ability to understand their, their own experiences. Um, Christian missionaries came in and set up schools and took children out of their communities away from their parents and raised them in a very dogmatic form of Christianity um, and and there was a lot of systematic abuse that took place um, it was really the whole story of residential residential schools was covered up for a long time and actually the last one closed in 1996 so it's within living memory if you haven't read the truth and reconciliation report I think it's really important that you do especially if you're Canadian but even if you're not just to understand um, the context of what is happening culturally in Canada right now and the huge resurgence of Indigenous cultures and um, sort of this blossoming in the past 20 years of Indigenous artists, Indigenous writers um, really speaking their truths and working through the cultural trauma that has come about as a result of um, really horrific government policies towards First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. So I'll leave a link in the down bar to the Truth and Reconciliation Report. It's all online, you can read it. It really doesn't take that long, um, but I, I think it's an important step just to understanding what took place in order to change it for the future and in order to work through it ourselves individually. There's, every, there's tons of stuff you can do individually to work towards reconciliation in your own life and just being able to have that dialogue with your family, especially if you're a settler Canadian and your family is very um, set in their own history of Canada that may not have included Indigenous people or may have um, unfair views. So I won't get too much into the plot of Split Tooth, um, although for me it really was a, about this coming of age story of this teenage girl who really um, I think is a shaman in her community but she's not recognized as a shaman and she's not appreciated as a shaman and um, that that heartbreak that disconnect for her I think really contributes to the tragic ending of the story I think I should have some sort of rating system for this channel as it is a critic channel and I'm doing reviews. So um, I'm going to give Split Tooth four out of five jars of maple syrup. 
Well, does that sound? I don't know. What what should it be? Maple syrup jars, maple leaves, hockey sticks, polar bears, polar bears. Four out of five polar bears. <laughs>